Hey everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101 where we give you fun new rock painting ideas that anybody can create. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get painting. I'm gonna just start getting my paint out while we're waiting for people to come on in. Um, I thought I maybe shared this in the past, but I use jar lids all the time for paint palettes. Uh, a little trick if it makes it helpful for you. I make a little roll of painter's tape and I tend to like stick my palette down to my surface. So when I'm in there with paint, it's not wiggling around on me. I don't know, it's just a personal thing I do, but I thought, you know what, I don't know that I ever shared that before. Um, we are going to be doing some acrylic flowers and spring is right around the corner. I'm really itching to see these flowers start popping up. I see little daffodils kind of poking through the ground around here. So um, I wanted to do a really, simple um, uh, acrylic flower for y'all to try. Um, this is the easiest technique that I know for painting flowers. So I thought it would be perfect for beginners. So I've just got some, a pink and a purple here. You can do these two-toned. These are, I believe, from the same kind of pack. I don't know, Craft Smart sold at, um, Michaels it's their like house brand any colors you want are gonna work for this I've kind of got a whole mismatched hodgepodge of different kinds of paints here so this is my deco art yellow so just use what you have these colors are not specific this style or way of drawing or painting a flower um, can be done in lots of different color combinations I do have a few other ones that I did and then this green is really thick kind of style green but I just liked the tone of it and so I'm using it today. Um, what else do I have here? A little bit of white, just in case I might need it here. Just put a little dab off to the side. Maybe, oh, my white's getting low. All right, so if you're joining in live, hello everybody. Um, thanks for those that are sharing this into your local rock painting groups. Um, that's always helpful to get these tutorials out. It gives people confidence to try something. So we're gonna do something similar to this. Now this was kind of on a darker stone, so it's kind of hard to pick it up on the camera. Um, and so I'm painting on a lighter stone today. We're gonna do the inverse of this flower. So we're gonna do pink tips, purple towards the center. Um, but like I said, you can do, so I've got that one back here, so it's more like this. Um, so you can do different color combinations, play around. Um, you can do a single color with white as well. So there's endless ways you can do this once you see the process. So the first thing we're gonna do really quick is get down some leaves that will be in the background. They can kind of fill up some of the negative space and it's also a great way for you to practice the technique that we're gonna to use to make all of our petals. So I've got this really thick green, so I'm just gonna kind of dip. Can you see my water? You can't see water, but I mean, it's water. I'm just gonna dip my paintbrush, straighten my water. I'm not even gonna dry it off and go into this green because this is a really thick style of acrylic. So I'm just gonna kind of mix a little dab of water to get it a little bit more fluid. I don't need it this thick. There we go. And you can even add like a little wisp of like a white in here very easily. So I'm just gonna kind of dab the tip of my green in that white there. And I'm actually gonna work from the center out because I don't really wanna have too much white um, on the tips. I kinda want that pulling from the center. So that we're gonna practice. This is exactly how we're gonna do our petals. Um, we're just gonna make them a little bit bigger. Uh, so it's great for you to kinda practice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna place the tip down first. And then as you pull away, you're gonna press down to make it wide and then pull up slowly, okay? Now these leaves are gonna get kind of covered a little bit, so it's great for um, kind of seeing how much pressure you can play around with how wide they get and pull away like that. You could also do this with like a little bit of um, yellow in there or with no, no white whatsoever. It's really up to you. Make sure I'm staying in screen here. So again, very lightly press down as you pull away, press down and come back up. I got the shakes this morning a little bit, maybe a little too much coffee. <laughs> it's funny, because I, I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, do you still get nervous going live? Yes, four years later, yes. All right, so we're gonna do a few leaves over here, press down and away. 
Okay. That, that white didn't pull through very much. I didn't get very much on there, but that's okay. Here we go. And it's just so that they're kind of peeking out from behind your design when you get your flower on there, okay? So there's no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting it. I'm just kind of trying to fill, like I said, the negative space on the rock. So you don't have a whole bunch of um, empty space on the outside. So I'm just gonna do a couple more here. Again, this is great practice for you before you start doing your petals. So we're just gonna kind of do a few more that might be poking out here and there. And maybe one more down here. There's a single guy hanging out. There you go. And you can kind of play around with size too. See how much smaller I was able to do that? Same paintbrush, right? So just a couple little, maybe little ones poking out here. Short, stubby. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that brush out. I'm gonna give these just a moment to kind of set here. And then we'll start doing our petals. And we're gonna use the same technique. And whatever color you want um, the tip to be is not what you're loading first, okay? So on this one, I loaded my brush with purple and then put pink on the tip. And so it seems like, you know, I. The color you're very little adding just the littlest bit on the top when you're doing these flowers you actually can get quite a bit into your flower uh, so this one is purple on the tip pink loaded in the brush and this is the opposite this one is purple loaded in the brush and pink on the tip and we're going to do one like this but i actually have this purple is a different purple than what i used to do these this one's a little bit darker i think it's really going to pop on this lighter rock so just giving this a couple more seconds here Okay, so we can go ahead and start loading our brush. So I am, so the first brush I used, this was a number three round brush. So if you buy like a set of uh, paint brushes, you'll get a combination of round brushes, liner brushes, and flat brushes. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find, well, this one doesn't say, but like you'll have like the square tip brushes whoop, in your pack. And then you'll get the like liner style ones, which are like pointier. This one I've even trimmed to be even more of a liner. I actually cut some of the bristles out of that so I could have an extra, extra fine tip one. So this was the number three round tip. And for the flower petals, I am going to be using my number five. So see the difference in size there? Because I do want my petals to be a little bit bigger, but you can still make them small as well, even though it's a bigger brush. Like these I did all with this brush. All right, so what we're gonna start with is loading up our brush with the under color. And when I mean load it up, I mean load it up. So you're gonna press it in there and kind of wiggle that paint in those br bristles, okay? So you're gonna kind of wiggle it in there because you wanna really fill it up because we're only gonna put the purple on here one time for an entire lap around our flower if possible because that will keep our Color's pretty even, okay? So it's nice and loaded up with the purple. Go ahead and spin it in there once you got it wiggled so you got a nice little point, okay? And then we're gonna dip just the tip into our pink. So just dab just a little bit of pink on the, on the top there. It's not a lot. Can you see that? See, just that littlest bit of pink on the top. And then we're going to build them in the same way. So decide where you want the center of your flower to be and you're gonna aim towards there. Now you get a little bit of leeway. You don't have to have these perfect little tips at the end because we're gonna add a center to our flower um, when it's all said and done. So again, you're gonna to touch that pink down, pull towards the center and then flatten and then pull back up, okay? So, and each time you're gonna get a little bit more pink on your tip, all right? You'll, I try to get, six maybe seven petals on each row so again touch down press out and pull back up Ooh, that one got a little bit more pink in i like that i might have to redo that first one i didn't get as much pink as i usually like to have so press down pull away and pull back up i'm going to redo this now while it's wet press down pull away there we go that's better so again, I'm not adding any more purple into my brush every time. 
And we're getting these really pretty variations in our flower. I know there's a little bit of a glare from my lights, but I think you guys can see that pretty good. So we've got five there. So again, just kind of space them out however you like. It depends on maybe how big you're making them too. It also depends on if you want to do one or two layers. Like on these ones back here, I did two layers. Today I'm just going to do the single layer, I think, on these. One more. There we go. And see how easy that was? And it looks so cute. You get those nice little variations of the flower. So once you've got your flower down on your stone, you can come back with a smaller liner brush if you need to, to touch up any areas. Like if you want yours to come to a better tip, like this one right here didn't quite get as much of a tip on it as I wanted to. So you can come back in with one of these really tiny brushes and give this more of a tip like that. See how simple that was? Let me bring it closer to do another one for you so you can see. All right, so see this guy's a little bit rounded. So you can just come in with one of these really tiny little brushes and just give it a little quick tip. Just like that, okay? If that's something that you want. Maybe depends on the kind of flower that you're going for. Um, if you want to have it come to a tip, some petals don't come to a perfect tip. As you practice, when you press, you'll get better at getting um, more perfect tips. But again, more rock painting 101, right? I don't expect you to pick up a brush and, and lay it down perfectly. So I want to show you how easy it is to kind of come in here and just add those little details to take it up a notch like that also going to come along the edge of this one because look my leaf is just kind of hanging out and you could do two things here one you can make your petal a little bit bigger which is what i'm going to do or you could come in here with a little green if you wanted to add a little stem and have it popping out but i'm just going to take a little bit of my pink and i'm just gonna add just that little little edge so that that leaf is coming from someplace oops almost knocked a there we go so we're drying in that center spot pretty well. That's what I'm waiting for here so that we can finish our stone. For doing the center, you've got a couple options. I've got my yellow here. Um, you can just take one of your round brushes and kind of dab with yellow, boop, 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 boop. I like to use a dabbing motion so that you don't get like a perfectly round center on this style of stone. Um, so we can go a little bit of the yellow in there, just kind of dab, dab dab like that and I'm careful not to pull up any color in there so if you think you maybe got it just kind of I got a piece of paper back here just kind of dry it off on you could even come in with a little couple little speckles of, of white in there just to kind of change up the the hues a little bit so it's not just a solid color and that works well too so I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna lighten up my purple just a little bit for the next layer. And then we'll do a second layer of our petals. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit of this white back here right into my plum. To lighten it up. And we'll do the second layer a little bit lighter on top and it will help it kind of separate from the uh, petals below. So again, I'm loading up that brush because we're not gonna wanna re-add purple halfway through. Okay, and then we're gonna roll it on there. All right, we're gonna dab right into our pink, and again, we're gonna go in between each one of our petals, okay? And here, I'm gonna start on this side because that set right there is a little wet. So, and I usually make them just a tad bit shorter. So in between, down, press, and back up. And it's okay if you get to your yellow there a little bit because you can go back in and, and touch up that center if you did your center in between. So again, press, 
down and up. Okay. I like that lighter purple already. A little more spring to me. The dark purple was a little... I know there's not a lot of flowers in the fall, but just a little. But it looks cool coming out from behind. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse that brush. And again, you can come back in with your liner brush and, and add any little details or extras that you need or want to add. I don't know if I rinsed this one out when I did my yellow. So, especially towards that center, I didn't want to go too far into the center just because I don't want to have to muddy up my yellow doing the touch up. So, again, you can come in. Sometimes you can just go with the paint that's there. If it's still wet, I'm just gonna come in and just bring these all the way to the center. And then we'll come back with that yellow when that's dry and just give it just a little bit of a touch up. For the most part, I stayed out. A couple spots where it kind of snuck in. Like that. I like that light purple a lot better. I'm glad we did that. All right. Okay. So that needs to dry, but there we go. How easy. Like I said, practice kind of the pressure. That's the hardest part is kind of getting that pressure down to start with the tip, pull in, pressure, pull back up. But that's why the leaves in the background are great because you can kind of practice a few times with the leaves. You can always go back in, like I said, with the liner and kind of touch up, even with the leaves. Like if you want them to come to more of a point, you could come back in with that liner and your green paint and really give them a point. You know, um, it's a very forgiving kind of design. And if you really don't like the color combination of your petals, once it's dry, you can just go right over the top of the petals with a completely different color combination. Um, just add a new petal, add a new color, whatever you need to do. Um, the center's almost there. I'm gonna try to lay it right on top so that you guys can see it done, done. Carefully so I don't end up pulling up a bunch of purple. There we go, a little of that. See if I can get some of this white with no purple. Add a couple little highlights in here. There we go. And it's done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you guys give this a try. Um, if you do, as always, come back and share in the comments. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find um, the comment section on the live Facebook post to share your flowers when you're done if you want to give them a try. So thank you guys that joined in live today. Thanks for the shares and the thumbs ups and all the comments and things. I will come back through and check for questions, make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, and I will be back again soon with another rock painting tutorial for beginners. Bye-bye.